In this video, I'm going to share five pronunciation shortcuts that will make you sound much more like a native English speaker. Shortcuts are things like abbreviations, the clipping of words, and blending between words that are extremely common in casual conversational speech. It's probably the same thing in your language too, but native English speakers communicate this way because it's faster and the other person understands what you're saying without you having to say the whole thing. Some of these shortened forms of speech are abbreviations, and examples are like HR for human resources, VIP for very important person, or AKA for also known as. You also probably know shortened things like lab for laboratory, limo for limousine, and blog for weblog. And you also likely know the blended speech between words like want to becoming wanna, going to becoming gonna, and have to becoming have to. But take care because things like gonna, wanna, and have to are more for conversational speech and not for professional or academic writing. So since you likely know some of these already, what I'd like to do in this video is introduce a few words that you probably don't know. Our first word is remember. Remember. Now, remember just means to recall something from the past, to think about something, to be reminded of something. And though it's perfectly fine to use the full word, you'll often hear it shortened to member in conversations. Remember the party we went to last year? Here it is a little bit faster. Remember the party we went to last year? Remember the party we went to last year? Remember the party we went to last year? You'll often not hear natives even say, do you remember something? They'll just say, member, member, member. I remember playing basketball at college over 30 years ago. Here it is faster. I remember playing basketball at college over 30 years ago. I remember playing basketball at college over 30 years ago. Now, to decide which of these you should use, remember or member, usually we're using remember when we want to emphasize something. Like, I really remember a dear friend of mine, or you're giving a speech and you want to be more clear. But in casual conversational speech, when you're just talking with a friend, member is perfectly fine, and it will help you sound much more native. Remember what I'm telling you right now? Our next word is because. Because. Now, this is, again, perfectly fine to use in a conversation, but very often you'll also hear natives just saying, cuz, cuz, cuz. It's almost like a C-U-Z pronunciation, cuz, cuz. Like, I want to do something cuz I like it, cuz I like it, cuz I like it. I went home because I was tired. I went home because I was tired. But if we say it faster and more conversationally, I went home because I was tired. I went home because I was tired. I went home because I was tired. Why do I exercise? Because I want to stay healthy. Why do I exercise? Because I want to stay healthy. Why do I exercise? Because I want to stay healthy. Now be careful because this is also a word by itself. Cause. Cause. The cause of something is the reason why something happens. The cause of your back trouble is how you sit. But more conversationally, your back hurts because of how you sit. Your back hurts because of how you sit. To know which, just try replacing cause with because. You wouldn't say the because of your back trouble is how you sit. So we just use cause. So be careful when you're pronouncing this. If you're saying it conversationally, cuz. I went home because I was tired. I went home because I was tired. Next, excuse. Excuse. Now, excuse is something you say when you are trying to ask for permission or forgiveness or even for a favor. And this is commonly shortened to skews. Skews. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. But be careful because this is also the same spelling as excuse. Excuse. Like, I have an excuse for not coming to work today. So an excuse is the noun, which we don't shorten to skuse. But the verb is excuse, which we do shorten to skuse. 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 
Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? You'll hear Jimi Hendrix use this in the song Purple Haze. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. Now remember, take care with this. Excuse me is usually something when we're saying very conversationally, asking for a favor or asking someone to pardon me, move out of my way, or can I do something? But when we want to be more polite, we do express the full thing. Excuse me for being late. Please excuse my tardiness. I'm sorry for being late. So when you're really asking for permission or you're asking for forgiveness, we do express the full thing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Next, accept. Accept. This is something we use when we're excluding something from a group. And this is shortened to sept. Sept. Often with the T at the end disappearing as well. So really you're just left with sept. 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 We were so busy we did everything except relax on our vacation. We were so busy we did everything except relax on our vacation. We were so busy we did everything except relax on our vacation. Except for a few people, everyone left a while ago. Except for a few people, everyone left a while ago. Except for a few people, everyone left a while ago. Now, one note about this is that you also have the word accept. Accept. Like, are you accepting job applications? or I accept a present from you when you receive something. The pronunciation is slightly different from these. The except that we're talking about is more of an ix sound, except, except for. So except for the hot weather, I really like it here, except. And then when you receive something, it's more of an accept, accept. So except and accept. It's really not so different, and actually native speakers will really pronounce them the same way in conversations. So unless you listen really closely, or natives are actually trying to pronounce them differently, you won't hear much of a difference. And our last pronunciation shortcut is suppose. Suppose. Now, this is when we're offering a reason or a possibility, and we don't quite know what could be correct, uh, and it might not have a fact, but maybe we believe something, or it's a suggestion that we're offering. And this is shortened as spose, spose, spose. I suppose we could take a taxi if you don't want to walk. I suppose we could take a taxi if you don't want to walk. I suppose we could take a taxi if you don't want to walk. Suppose you were a superhero. What would your power be? Suppose you were a superhero. What would your power be? Suppose you were a superhero. What would your power be? Are you supposed to take your shoes off in the house? Are you supposed to take your shoes off in the house? Are you supposed to take your shoes off in the house? In this last example, notice it's supposed to becomes supposed to, supposed to, supposed to. Are you supposed to take your shoes off in the house? Are you supposed to take your shoes off in the house? Finally, let's review today's five words. Practice speaking along with me. Remember the party we went to last year? Remember the party we went to last year? Remember the party we went to last year? I went home because I was tired. I went home because I was tired. I went home because I was tired. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? I love every sport except ping pong. I love every sport except ping pong. I love every sport except ping pong. I suppose we could take a taxi if you don't want to walk. I suppose we could take a taxi if you don't want to walk. 
I suppose we could take a taxi if you don't want to walk. I'm Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com, and thanks so much for learning with me today. To discover hundreds more great ways to sound more native, improve your speaking confidence, and get more fluent, do these three simple things right now. 1. Click on this link to subscribe to my YouTube channel for over 500 free videos. 2. Click on this link to download my number one ebook guide to fast fluency free. And 3. Click here to watch the most popular video on English fluency here on YouTube.